Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's get our Bible title this morning as we prepare to go before the Lord on this morning. Now, I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I'm going to begin reading that. Verse 1. Lord God, we thank you for your word that is getting ready to go forth. Lord, we thank you now for ears to hear, hearts to receive. We think that in this moment your people shall be encouraged, backsliders to claim, and the word of faith shall come alive in our hearts and minds today. And Father, we are eloquently so careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Lord God, as always, I'm thinking on another level. I'm talking on another level. And because of your word, I can change. All this morning, I want to share a word that's going to encourage you. A word that's going to help to strengthen you, to help fortify your faith where you are and what God is going to do in and through your life. Remember growing up as a little boy, Brother Ramon, we, uh, we used to have the toy and we used to play Pac-Man. Man, I'm telling you, my mom and my dad, I mean, they would be going at it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And sometimes, it seemed like my mom would always get the best of my father. But then a little while later, there was another game system that came out. And this game system that came out was called the Nintendo. How many of you remember the Nintendo? And whenever you would be playing the Nintendo sometime, the game would freeze. Yes. And what you would have to do, you would have to open the lid up, take the cartridge out, blow it, and then stick it back in and start the game all over again. again. Yes. And I have learned for myself that there are times when I would take it out, I would blow it, and stick it back in and it seemed like the game would play better than it ever played before. And so on this morning, we find ourselves in Luke chapter 5. Now I'm going to minister your hearing today from this particular subject, Try Again. Somebody say, Try Again. Try Again. There are those of us who have lived our lives. We try our best to be faithful to God. We try our best to do all that's asked of us to do living this Christian life. But how many know that every day is not always easy? As a matter of fact, there are some days that are just harder than others. There are some days that it seems like the blessings of God is just falling real, real heavy on your life. And then there are days when it seems like you're going through all kinds of chaos and all kinds of problems. And I have found out that if you live a life, you say that you've never been through nothing. If you just keep on living, a storm is going to come. And I don't know about you today, but I've been through some storms in my life and I wish they would have just passed over and I wish that it would have never came. There have been some storms that have come in my life that has caused me, Missionary Rose, to cry some serious tears. There have been some storms that made me feel like I couldn't make it. There have been some songs that made me feel like I couldn't go on. There have been some songs and some days where I was in the bed and didn't want to get out of the bed because I didn't want to deal with anybody. There have been times where you have even gone through days all your time you're like, man, I don't even much want to go in today because I don't want to deal with nothing that's going on. But I've learned that if you put your trust in God, God will see you through. Do I have anybody out there who can testify today that God will see you through? It 
anybody can testify today that if you go through situations that God is able to bring you out on top, do I have anybody who can testify that even in your sick days, God was better to you than you been to yourself? Man. Even in your trying moments, God has been a present help in the time of trouble. And so we find ourselves in Luke chapter 5. But we have been brought fish. And it says, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and they were washing their nets. One of the first things you have to understand is that these men were fishermen by trade. This was how they provided for the families. This was how they made their living. This was how they provided for themselves to live the day to day life. And you know what it's like going to work every day, week after week, month after month, and then when it comes time for you to get paid, the people don't have no money, you got a problem. Oh yeah, it's going to be a problem if I work a full two weeks and I come on a Friday and I'm expecting my money to be in my bank account. My money is not there. Oh, it's going to be some problems today. Why? Because you are expected to get paid what is due you. And these men, they were out on the boat and they were fishing. And the Bible says that they were standing and already took their nets out of the water. Meaning that the day was over and it was done dealing with everything that they were dealing with. But I don't care how good you may be or how you may feel that there's going to come some days in your life where things are not productive. I'm talking about days when you do everything that you were supposed to do. Some days things are not going to be productive. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. I want to pause right there. I want to know who can sit long enough to hear what God is trying to tell them. Because there are so many people who come to the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning. They hear the message. And by the time they get their car to go home, they forget what the message is all about. But Jesus here, he told them to push the boat out a little from the land. And as they pushed the boat out, he was in the boat. He began to teach from the boat. And when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down the nets for a drop. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we are called all night and have taken Nothing. They were telling Jesus, I understand what you're trying to say, bro. You're telling me to get in the boat and go out and get back in the water because something is getting ready to happen. I had already done that. I had already had my fishing pole. I had already used the right bait that I'm supposed to use and I dropped it in the water and I worked all night long, but yet I still didn't catch nothing. And one of the things I have learned is that. In the midst of trying times when it seems like you are supposed to be productive and you are not productive, that's when the enemy will begin to play mind games with you. The enemy will make you feel like you've been wasting your time. He'll make you feel like you took your last bait and put it in the water thinking you're going to get a catch, but yet you still didn't catch nothing. He will make you feel like you're not good enough to do what it is that you've been doing all along. But I want to encourage a lot of that regardless of what you've been through and regardless of what you've gone through, God has a way of providing for his people. And if you can just sit still long enough and hear what thus said the Lord, the Lord will give you some directions and instructions to call his blessings to fall in your life. And so the enemy will trick you and he will play it. All kinds of games with your mind. The Bible says that the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I can remember going to the service with my father when I was young. And at the service, y'all remember the ringing brothers? At the service, 
notice you will have a lion that's there, and you will have a lion tamer, Elder Russell. And you notice they will have a whip in their hand, but then they will also have a stool. The stool has four legs on it. Now I want to let you know today that the stool is more important than the whip. Because to you, you would think that when the lion begins to act up, the tamer would use the whip to get the lion back into place. But the truth of the matter is, it's not the whip that gets the lion in order, it's the stool. Because when you pick the stool up, the stool have four legs on it. And the stool, the, the tamer would take the stool and hold the stool up and he would point it towards the lion. The reason why he would do this is because the stool distracts the lion from what he was getting ready to do. And so God has put us in a position to where sometime in life he has to raise up a stool to pause you in your steps so you can pay attention to what he's trying to do for you. And if you can just stand still and allow God to speak to you and through you, you can hear what he's trying to say. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. The Holy Spirit will reveal all things back unto your remembrance. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit on this morning because it's the Holy Spirit that leads. It's the Holy Spirit that guides. It's the Holy Spirit that shows me where I need to go. And sometimes driving in your car, you may be ready to turn down one road, and then you will say something told me to go another way. It's not something told me to go another way. It's the Holy Spirit trying to deter you from getting in the midst of an accident. But if you would just listen and hear what God said to the Lord, you will come out on top. And when he had left speaking, he had said, Simon, Lord, child, to the meeting that night we meant for a drop. And Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have called all the night and have not taken nothing. But nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. He said, nevertheless, at the word of your man. Because sometimes your man can be wrong. I'm a man, and sometimes I am wrong. And I thank God the white man's a uh, wise counsel that helps me uh, to guide me and put me in a position where if I would just listen sometimes, some things that I wouldn't get ready to get myself into, I would be able to pause and come out of it. I want to ask you today, who do you have in your life that's stopping you from doing some things that you wouldn't have normally done on your own, but if you would have done it, you would have gotten into some trouble? Yeah. We all need a accountability part. And the man had been in the boat all night doing what he knew to do. Washing, he was out washing the because he was over and he had caught nothing. But at the word of Jesus, he said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the man. And the Bible says that when he had done this, they had closed a great multitude of fishes and their nets broke. He would have never caught the harvest that he had received if he did not listen to the voice of Jesus. Sometimes you can be out doing your own thing, doing your own thing, have your own plans, have your own way of doing things, but yet when the Lord began to speak and begin to talk, he will show you where to go. And there are those of you who have done some things that have not been fruitful. You've applied uh, for different jobs and it seemed like you didn't get a car or you went to the dealership and wanted a certain kind of vehicle and you were not approved of. You've been trying to purchase a home and uh, the credit just wasn't where it was. And it seemed like every time you would try, 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 nothing would happen. But I'm going to encourage somebody on today just like the man who was out in the water who had caught nothing. I want to encourage you to try again. Try again because this time there's going to be a special anointing that's going to help you make it through everything.
thing that you are going through. There's going to be a special anointing that's going to bring deliverance. There's going to be a special anointing that's going to bring freedom. And there's going to be a special anointing that's going to help you get where you're trying to go. And when they had done this, they clothed the great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned to their partners, which were in the other ship, that they would come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. The only reason why the boat began to sink is because they caught an abundance of fish. And that's where God is trying to position you. He's trying to position you to a place where you not only have enough to sustain you, but you have enough to sustain others. And when we put our faith and our trust in the Lord, and He will guide us and give us some instructions, He will give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and He will give us ways out of no ways that will break all barriers and will break all kinds of things that people are thinking that should not happen and cause a miracle to fall on your behalf. And I want to encourage you today to know that you can make it. You can make it. You can endure everything that you are dealing with even now. You can make it. You can endure it. Just like that Nintendo. Sometimes you got to turn the power off, pull the cassette out, blow it, and then move on with your life. And I don't care how the previous season may have been. The previous season may have been unfruitful. But this time, somebody say this time. This time. This time, it's going to work. Look at somebody real good and say it's going to work. It's going to work. Look at somebody again and say it's going, it's going to, work. to work. Somebody put their hands together and bless the name of the Lord today. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Hallelujah. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Yes. It's gonna work. Yes. There's been times where I felt like quitting. There's been times where I felt like giving up. Hallelujah. There's been times where I just felt like things wasn't good. You know, like the kids, when they out there playing, you know, they don't say the when they get hit. They say, man, give me my ball, I'm going home. Yep. <laughs> that was me. That was you. Never been a great basketball player, but I've been one that was able to catch the good rebounds. And when I didn't get picked, man, give me my ball, I'm going home. That's it. If I can be honest, some days at the church, you say, man, this is right here for the birds. That's it. I'm ready to pack my bags and move on and go it's somewhere all right. else. That's all right. And live my life. All right. Because when you know your value, hear me, hear me. Hear me. When you know your value, Hallelujah. Don't let nobody bring you below your value. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say, when you know your value. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell my wife to say, we'll see. You know what? I can be anywhere going strong. And going forth, this was the birds. I done had enough. And she would encourage me. She would say, honey, she said, it's not time. I said, man, that was question. I, this hasn't been reached this, this time pass. Let me make that good. Time pass. I said, you know what? I'm packing my bags. I'm going back down. I'm going back down now. Three-story house, two-car garage, zebo day in the back, water flowing in the back, with all kind of fish and everything, living good, living the blessed life. So you know what? I'm going back. My side of here, you all just done. And I said, you ready? You ready to pack the bag? And she said, no. <laughs> the Lord said, it ain't time. What you mean it ain't time? I've been out here washing, fixing all that long, and I ain't catch nothing. I'm about to pull my head out this water. Pack my bags, and I'm going back where I know it was very fruitful for them. Hallelujah. And she said, the Lord said, it ain't time. It's not time. And in that moment, I felt so angry because she told me the Lord said it wasn't time. Now I'm looking at her like, God talking to you? Because he speak to her all the time. 
and I sat still. And I prayed and prayed. I said, Lord, if it's for me to let go and go on, cause that to go to close. Yes. But if it's for me to be here in New Orleans, Father, just begin to open up doors. Hallelujah. And it just seemed like every time I turned around, a different door was open. Every time I turned around, more and more increases come. Every time I turned around, it just seemed like the favor was just falling everywhere. And I was like, yes, that woman did have a word with you. It wasn't her. And I want to say to somebody here today, you may have been doing everything you know to do, and you may have wanted to quit. It ain't time. It ain't time. Try again. Try again. Maybe you have been fishing on the wrong side. That's right. That's right. But when you take your net and cast change position. Now I'm gonna give you my name to preach this thing. Change position. When you take your net and put it on the other side, hallelujah. There are so much fish that you're gonna catch that your nets will begin to break. Father, I thank you today for your anointing. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now for giving your people strength to continue the race. For the race is not given to the swift or the battle to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. Father, let us not be weary in our well doing for a new season. We shall reap if we think not. Father, thank you right now for the harvest that you have already prepared for your people. Father, they may not see it right now, but the harvest is already on the way. They just have to stay in position to receive all that you have come. And Father, I thank you that even now, I'm not going to get out of place, but I'm going to stay still and watch the manifestation of the glory fall in my life. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Come on, put your hands together. Really I pray you have a seat somewhere. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, I want to offer Christ to you today. Hallelujah, you don't have to walk this walk alone, but yet, you have a risen Savior that's right there to help you along the process. You have someone that has been through everything that you can even imagine or go through in this life. There's someone that's there ready to lead you and guide you into all truth. And I offer Christ on today to you. You may say, I want to talk to God, I'm no longer in right standing, but I want to recommit my relationship on today. If that's you, hallelujah, let me pray for you today. Hallelujah. Is there one in your own today? You're not saved and you want to be saved. You want to walk with God and you're no longer right standing and you want to renew your relationship with Him. I want to offer Christ to you all today. Thirdly, you may say, I'm saved, but I need a church home. A place where I can get planted and grow the things of God. I want to offer to you today the breath of our church of God in Christ. A church that won't judge you where you are, but will love you where you need to be. Hallelujah. Is there one on today? 